All right, uh, welcome. Uh, this video is an appropriate video to watch, uh, even if you have no other real experience with the law of implication. Uh, it also, this particular one comes with a David Mills guarantee of certainty that you are going to uh, get a great benefit uh, from this video. I don't say that often. I'm putting my whole reputation on the line, which currently is a pretty uh, stainless uh, reputation. So hopefully we will keep it that way. In this video, and it might spark a few videos, uh, almost certainly, we're going to be dealing with deep down in your mind, you, there is a mental model and that, that pretty much comes with a methodology. Um, and uh, this particular series is going to be about breakthrough, what I'm going to call breakthrough and consolidation stacking. But it really gets to at least one major angle on the heart of what the Law of Implication course is uh, about, which is a methodology and a model for getting results in your life. So deep down, you have this mental model and, and methodology that, that is relevant every day and many times per day and on a large scale in your life and also on kind of a, a detail level, um, smaller scale in your life constantly. And it has to do with achievement and motivation and what you set your goals for, how you feel about how you're progressing through your goals, what you do after you achieve a goal, how you feel like you've achieved a goal or not, and pretty much um, almost everything to do with your sense of, or, or your actual effectiveness, your efficiency, and your sense of satisfaction, motivation, all of that. So all of the things I just named, which are obviously very central to your life, are um, affected greatly by one part, one little mental model, one little way of operating or methodology. And right now I can almost guarantee you that that model and that methodology are suboptimal. You've almost certainly picked up a way of doing this whole action of, of taking action, uh, goal achievement, effectiveness, um, how you feel about um, your, um, your achievements and your motivation and everything like that. You almost certainly, I'm going to go to the next slide here, you almost certainly do a fair amount or almost entirely um, what, I, what, I can, what we can call, um, there's no perfect word for this, but result plus checkbox stacking rather than breakthrough and consolidation stacking. So in this video and video series, we're going to want to have a breakthrough about the idea of breakthrough and consolidating, and then we're going to want to consolidate this new breakthrough about breakthroughs and consolidating. Instead, um, what people will do is they'll tend to set a goal for a particular result, and then they will kind of metaphorically um, sort of check off a box, and they kind of go through their life like they're checking off a uh, little check, check marks on their to-do list. And even at the end of each day, people will often sort of do a little mental checklist of how much they accomplished or how many little checks that they can give themselves for that day of actions they took. And that's how they get a sense of whether they're, they're making progress in their life and, uh, and so forth, or whether they feel satisfied with that progress. And then it's how they figure out how to what, what's the next goal that they want to set. And this all tends to happen pretty automatically in your brain. I don't mean that people actually set goals by even writing them down or whatever, but it's just sort of this constant process, right? Your your day-to-day -day life and also your life on kind of a grander scale, like like how, like how um, like what you accomplished during a particular year or what your career is or how much money you're making or the nature of your relationships on a, on a larger scale in your life. That's also um, comes out of the same process of this kind of... Um, semi-conscious goal setting and then this uh, checking off of these goals and then moving on to the next goal. And this is pretty much where our sense of satisfaction and happiness is coming from and then plus all the actual results and the kind of the configuration of our lives is coming from. This and almost certainly you at least do some of this uh, bottom part here, this result plus checkbox stacking and to the extent that you do this it is making your life much much harder and less effective and less happy and all that. And the more you move exclusively to um, going from breakthrough to breakthrough and consolidating, then and including setting your goals for to breakthrough and, cons and consolidate afterwards, 
then everything in your life is going to organize very differently and it'll be just a wonderful difference. And just with this one, one difference in understanding uh, and operating by switching your mental model about this one topic. So if we just illustrate this, um, so if we imagine that a person wants to get married and then first they want the result of having a date with someone and then they want it to feel good and then they check off a box and then they go on more dates and they start to become exclusive with the person and now they check off that box and then the person says that they love them and they check that off and the person wants to be intimate with them a reasonable amount of time, they check that off and then they get married, check and uh, they continue on. They get, um, and it's a little bit like a metaphor in their head also of traveling distance and then achieving milestones. And so, and each milestone is like, like you're just kind of traveling along and then you uh, get to a certain milestone, you check it off and you go to the next milestone. And then if there's like a kind of a, a wall or an obstacle in the way that wasn't expected, then uh, this whole idea of expectations and expectation meeting or expectation of failure is also a big part of this. And then if they if someone encounters an obstacle they didn't expect, then they're gonna feel frustrated. If they feel like it's like a, an obstacle that a person did not intentionally put in their way. And then if they feel like there's an obstacle that, that a person is intentionally doing or doing kind of by neglect or immorality, then they'll feel angry instead. Anger is like towards a person. Or if they feel like uh, their self didn't, uh, is, is responsible for that obstacle or that or, uh, or something like an obstacle or a screw-up or a setback, then they'll be angry at themselves. So this whole world of dealing with things this way is incorrect and uh, will lead to, again, a much more difficult, much, much, much more difficult, much less effective life. If you do it with relationships, your relationships will be much harder, lead to much less happiness and, and um, not just happiness, but the you know, we get a lot from our relationships. We get we get a feel a good feeling of happiness, or or we get upset from it. But we also get um, various forms of support, right? And in, in your business relationships, you can follow the same pattern, where people go, uh, are looking for certain uh, certain milestones in a particular relationship with a person, business wise, and then they kind of check that off and continue on. The way this might look like in business is that a, uh, you meet a person and they feel like they're nice, they act nice, and so that check, right? Um, and then uh, they seem to be skillful and maybe confident at what they do, check, and then they do some stuff, um, you might do some things together and you check that off, and then you get into a joint venture and you guys make an agreement and you check that off. and. Uh, what will often happen is a year or two later, or or even a month down the road. Oh, frustration! Didn't I didn't think I thought the person would do this, and now I'm not sure how to get them to change, or or how to tell them that I'd like it done differently. Or for this reason or that other reason, difficulties occur, frustrations occur. You might limp along and do okay with a person. You might have a particularly big blow up and and break up at some point. Not like a romantic breakup, but in this case, a business breakup, which is can be as bad or, or worse. And it's very common for business partnerships and relationships and joint ventures to implode within you know one, two, three years or so. And whether or not they implode, uh, also fairly early on, they can run into various issues and inefficiencies uh, and so forth, where people are spending a fairly large amount of time or getting worse results than they hoped for and they don't know how to make that better within their business relationship. They don't know how to, how to um, either change the person or change themselves or talk to the person in a way to get them to do something different uh, and, uh, and so forth. When you're building a business, then you can imagine that you have a bunch of milestones as well and you start checking things off. All right, I have a source of some traffic. All right, I have some way to get clients or customers, check, and then, oh, I need some kind of product, and then, so I find that, check, and then you end up in a situation a little bit down the road where um, because you didn't break through on any of these things, they each require a bunch of maintenance and upkeep, uh, random things start to go wrong, even if each of the individual th milestones or things that you checked off have a 90% chance of continuing to work, 
you start doing that, you start stacking 90% chances, and uh, it starts to build up where something's going to go wrong somewhere. And then you're busy dealing with that, and then something else goes wrong, you're dealing with that. And at some point, you grow and you stack these kind of 80% or 90% or 70% where things work kind of like, again, they, they kind of work 70% of the time or 80 or 90% of the time. Uh, but the maintenance starts to stack up and the fixing problem starts to stack up and you reach a point where you're at this kind of equilibrium where you can't really move forward because you're too busy fixing things as they break. And then you find you don't aren't enjoying yourself as much and you're wondering, oh, am I stuck in a rut? Or how do I break out? Or am I self-sabotaging? Or maybe it's something from my childhood or whatever. But fundamentally, um, you're, not, uh, you're not breaking through and consolidating properly. So let's say then with a relationship, you were to really have a, a, a great breakthrough in terms of understanding yourself and how, whatever that means. <laughs> I know, I understand, I have a very clear mental model for ourself and, and how that works in our brain and so forth. But, um, but let's say you have a breakthrough with that where you understand it well and then you take some time to um, consolidate and integrate and um, have it be kind of throughout your thinking where it's not just that you have a, a light bulb go off at one point and then forget about it. And then that breakthrough might be a great place to start and to stand and then it becomes easier to understand other people if you understand yourself and how you work because other people's brains work by default similarly to yours and that gives you a head start and then you can poke around and understand from there to see the differences and so forth so um, then let's so let's suppose then you understand and you have a nice breakthrough with understanding well how your uh, your partner and how they are your romantic partner so you understand yourself very well, you understand them quite well, and then let's suppose you understand what a great relationship looks like, and you have a nice breakthrough with that, and you um, work on the details as well, and you consolidate that breakthrough. And then suppose you think about what your, or you have a breakthrough on what your, what your plan for your actual, like living your life, like for the next several years, or, or, and so forth, or even a little bit of a general plan for how your whole life will play out. Um, and I mean that, you know, I don't mean like overly detailed there, but just have a good sense of how things are going to work out with kind of the, some of the major events that you're planning on in your life um, in terms of living together and how day-to-day -day life might be and in terms of having children might be or, or whatever. And you can adapt what I'm saying that very similarly to if you have a business relationship where you um, understand yourself, your, well, your business partner well, the nature of the business that you're making together, you have a good, clear understanding of that. And that's also uh, not only a clear understanding, but it's integrated. Um, it's worked through. You've worked through the details pretty well. After after you have a clear understanding as a framework, then you work through the details. And uh, you also have a general sense of an exit strategy and so forth in business. Then in either of those cases with, a, um, with like a marriage or with a business partnership, and I'm not only talking about relationships here, I'm just using this as an, as a, as an example to start to illustrate what I mean here. But... Um, very differently, things are not going to fall apart because you're stacking this consolidated clarity on top of consolidated clarity. You get things pretty much to 100% and then you stack 100% and you stack 100% where most any kind of reasonable event or, or piece of luck or bad luck that can happen in the environment isn't really going to cause a problem. And so you're not running around fixing problems. And so, and this is not just theory. I, this, is, this does describe what I did with my particular marriage before getting into it. And I mean, I, and I had a fail-safe mechanism built into it where my wife and I have the ability to discuss things and understand and make changes as, as necessary, or as we understand things, or if something kind of goes a little bit wrong, where we want to have something be better in our relationship. But for the most part, it doesn't, there's not this constant drain of, of creativity. There's not this constant resistance that I have to deal with from my wife. Um, and that frees me up to have breakthroughs in other areas. And um, in same thing with OMG Machines business. You know, when, when you're dealing with a business, you need to have traffic. You need to have a way to convert those potential customers to actual customers. 
or clients, and then you need to have a product. And if you have a proper breakthrough in each of those areas, then um, you're not putting out fires or having things go, go off and go wrong and stop working, and you can start to build new breakthroughs. And so you're, you're building solid on top of solid thing where normally people stack these kind of uncertain, uh, kind of wobbly or blurry uh, results on top of another uncertain or wobbly or blurry result. And they're stacking that and stacking that and stacking that. Uh, and at some point, either their life will fall apart or the relationship will fall apart altogether. Or they're going to be running around just maintaining what they have and rushing from urgency to urgency and, and they kind of reach a point where it's hard to progress. Or if they do progress in one area, then they're neglecting something else that needed to not be neglected in their lives. And then, you know, they might progress in their career and then their relationship falls apart. Or they might be okay in their marriage and their career, they might move forward, but then their relationship with their kids falls apart. Uh, or their health falls apart. So um, instead, we don't want to stack on top of these, these non-broken non through, non-consolidated results. And you might be asking, wait, are you, are you saying, David, that I just sit there and don't move forward in life until I get very solid and break through and consolidate with the things I have going on right now? Yes, I actually am saying that. Uh, let me give you a, another example having to do with learning that, uh, if you're not doing this, will revolutionize your ability to learn, such as the uh, coaching and training in OMG Machines uh, coaching. If somebody, let's say they, someone buys the OMG Machines coaching and they're thinking in terms of results and checkbox stacking, uh, now generally people will stick with us and, and, and it'll work out pretty well regardless, but they'll have a much harder time if they're in this uh, and, and part of that's because I, I've designed OMG Machines Coaching so that it really funnels people into eventually and, and ultimately having breakthrough and consolidating. It's the, the reason for the overwhelming success of members in OMG is that it's, it's all based uh, in, in one, one angle of understanding it is that it's very strongly based on this concept here where I'm, I'm creating the conditions for you to have a breakthrough and then to... Uh, to stabilize and consolidate and build on that breakthrough and, and keep it, and then you can go to the next breakthrough. But the whole way it's designed is, is to uh, reinforce this. However, if someone first gets in, it's common, and my orientation video helps deal with this, but then this video will further help deal with it. When someone comes in, they're to some degree, usually to a large degree, but to some degree people are in this type of mentality. And so they want a result. They're like, all right, I want to make a certain amount of money or I want to be able to rank a website or whatever it is. And they want to be able to do that as soon as possible. They want to check that box. Or they might want to go through all of the training, let's say. Now, we can notice something kind of funny or humorous or uh, whatever, which is that let's suppose that a per the result someone wants is for them to feel like they have a, good, a pretty good mastery of all of the training in OMG machines. And then let's say that someone makes a terrific new 10 video series. Uh, for example, the way um, a month or so ago I, we released a video series that Fletch had made on how to do pay per lead monetization with search engine optimization. Uh, where you're making deals with, with a client where they're gonna, they agree they're gonna pay you a certain amount for each qualified lead. Uh, rather than rather than having you pay you monthly to rank a site for them. So there's 10 more videos, let's say. Now, if someone is in this result and checkbox mentality, then those 10 videos basically made it harder for them, right? But of course, having those 10 videos from Fletch is purely beneficial, right? It's purely a bonus. But but humorously enough, if, if someone wants the result of, of checking off the box that they've kind of watched all the videos and understand them well, that every time I add a new video, they're going to feel like they're, they're further behind. So clearly a mental model that makes you feel more behind when something that's clearly beneficial happened, there has to be something wrong with that model, right? Can't be correct if it makes you feel, simplistically speaking, it makes you, if it makes you feel bad about something good, right? 
that's an obvious sign that something is wrong with the model. Uh, and if you're wondering how I figured a lot of this stuff out, it's by kind of following the breadcrumbs when I notice something is clearly wrong, where I'm, you know, if I'm feeling like something good is bad, right, then obviously there's something wrong with my model regarding that situation in life, and I keep digging and separate and try to make distinctions and, and separate things and and uh, zoom in and and uh, and keep trying to dig and understand until I figure it out. And that's how I figured this stuff out in the first place. You know, th this is one of the most central ideas in life, right? This is central to like every day, how we feel, what we do, how we act, how our decisions are, how our goals work. And so almost every road leads to figuring this out if you're trying to figure out how you think in life and how to, you know, lead a, the best possible life and help other people and so forth. Uh, I've, in essence, been working on figuring this out for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years, depending on how you measure it. Uh, and I've made progress over a, over a while, but um, it's more recent that I'm, I believe I'm able to express this, uh, express this in a particularly clear way. Uh, I still would like to have it even better, have even more examples and even more clarity with how I explain it, but I think we'll do quite a good job uh, in this video series. So how does it look like in order if you are going, going into the OMG Machines coaching and all those videos and training, and of course there's the question and answer sessions and the, and the community support, um, but let's start with folks thinking about the training. How would, how would it work if we're doing breakthrough and consolidation stacking? Now in a moment I'm going to go and um, to a slide where I talk about how to have breakthroughs and what a breakthrough looks like. But it'll help you process those slides and understand them quickly if I give you one example first and the example that I'm, that I'm doing. So um, so you, if the, the, uh, I'll just describe how, like generally how uh, I would go about watching the videos and mastering the training. Um, what I would want to do is I'd want to kind of poke around and see what, what different videos were where, right? I might watch a, a few videos here and there uh, to start with, uh, just to get a sense of, of how the videos go and what they're about uh, and, uh, and so forth. I might go to that deciding on your game plan monetization section and click on the links there and kind of navigate around and because there's a lot of there's a bunch of videos there in different categories. And then I might take a look at the background section, uh, take a look at the free traffic section and click into those links and take a look at what topics are covered. I go through the orientation section pretty carefully and I would be getting a sense of what is it that I know. And what that, what that means is, um, so for example, one thing that, might, that, that I might uh, realize that I, I probably know is that free traffic looks like a cornerstone of this training. So, and that seems to have to do with ranking on Google. And so that's one of the things that I can know, right? So when I, when I talk about I'm sort of um, organi I'm, when I'm organizing organizing things that I know to start with, I'm going to be building on that. Um, and the things that I'm listing that I know, they might be kind of simple, like I just said. But it's still it's great to just start and, and organize that way, and then build from there. So free traffic is a cornerstone, and then I might think for myself, how do I what what is going to be more interesting for me to start with? Do I want to get a handle on how to get free traffic? which might involve ranking a website on Google, or do I first more want to know how I'm going to make money once I do that? And just depending on my personality, one, or two, one of those answers might be more where I feel like starting. And there's no perfectly right answer. But at least I have that, that sense, right? That I know that both of those things are going to matter, and so I can start either place. I might want to start to get a sense of how I'm going to get free traffic or rank a website first without without going so far into it that I really understand it well or know exactly what to do. But I might want to get a sense of how it's going to work so I feel some confidence. And then once I get that sense, maybe I'll want to then switch over and start to really see how to monetize that before I go further. Um, but, but I might do things differently too, again, just depending on my preference and my personality. Uh, if I am going through the free traffic section, I might start to look at what things might appeal to me that I... I might want to start doing first. Um, or I might be looking for something I could particularly understand. 
even the idea of maybe when I'm starting out, I don't even know how to install WordPress on a website or what it even means to have a website or, or to host it. So maybe what I want to do is just do that. I might want to go register one domain and see how that works. And then I might want to get it hosted in, one, in somewhere, uh, presumably for, for as cheaply as I can, just because just I'm just learning and getting started here at this point. And then I might want to install WordPress, and then I might want to log in there and just see what that looks like. What, see, when I'm doing that, then I'm accumulating more things that I know, right? Because that, now that's, that's tangible stuff for me. Now I can picture that. So if instead I watched a video on registering a site, hosting, or I just, I just saw the term, and then I didn't quite have a good mental picture of what, that, what it looks like to host a site and to put WordPress on there, that's a little bit blurry for me. If I just sort of check it off, like, okay, I've watched that video, then I start to stack blurriness, and that's when you start getting confused. For example, if, um, if hosting a site, if that concept could mean sort of, let's say, just for the sake of argument, let's say it could mean three different things, or if there's kind of three different mental pictures, and I'm not really sure which of the, what it means. And so, or, or it might not be exactly three, but I'm just using that for, to kind of put a number on it. But if it's just like a little bit blurry in my mind, of what that might mean. I can't, if I can't picture it well, then if later there, Greg is talking about hosting and assuming that I understand hosting and then talking about different ways to, um, what, what, like different things to look out for with hosting or, um, or basically if he's talking and giving lessons that are kind of stacked on top of the idea of hosting, then if the hosting itself is kind of a blurry concept for me, that, and if and if like how WordPress works is a little bit blurry for me, and then Greg's talking about once you're inside WordPress, do this and do that, then I'm stacking blurriness on blurriness. And if I start to multiply, if hosting can mean three different things, and then if if WordPress could mean three different things, and then if um, posting an article on your website isn't very clear how that works as well. And that can mean three different things. Again, I'm, pick, I'm pulling the, word, the number three out of the air. Don't get stuck on that. But this helps to kind of put something mathematical to the, the, the point of this. So now if there's three different things hosting could mean, three different things WordPress could mean, three different things that putting an, an article on your website could mean, and then Greg talks about linking from a website, and I'm not quite sure what that means, um, like linking from where to where, or I didn't quite realize that I can have different website, different types of websites, some that are like part of my private blog network and some that are part of my money site. I'm not quite sure what that means. And if each of these th things could maybe mean three different things to my, my brain, then now that's three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So now my brain has like 81 different permutations and combinations of what Greg could be talking about. And it feels very confusing, right? Instead, if I get clear what... Um, what it means to host a site, and I do it, and it, and it now it uh, collapses down to just one clear thing. That's a one, right? One possibility, and then if I get very clear on how, on what it means to install WordPress, and so okay, that's taken care of, and then if I get clear on what it means to post an article on my site, okay, like how I get that article and what that article looks like, and and how I put, do it and all that, and then I get clear on what it means to link from an article to out to um, another site that I'm trying to rank. If all of those things collapse, each individual one collapses to just one clear possibility, now it's one times one times one times one, which is one. And so it's not confusing anymore to your brain. And so the reason we can feel overwhelmed is this multiplying blurriness. And people live their lives this way, where concept after concept can have multiple things that it can mean or possibilities. And... Um, Either we just feel very confused or what we'll do instead, what our brain will do is just pick one possibility of what it could mean because our, our brain can otherwise would, would kind of blow up, right? Just kind of blow a fuse or blow a gasket. And so instead it picks one thing, but it could be picking the wrong thing. So it might have an incorrect mental, mental picture or, or it might decide on what something means, but it's wrong. And now I'm just off in Never Neverland. I'm just off in the wrong direction. And so now I'm stacking kind of a wrong turn on top of a wrong turn on top of a wrong turn, and I'm out in the middle of nowhere or just off a cliff or, or somewhere. And eventually that's going to catch up with me as well. 
So at first it might feel like I'm making a lot more progress if I watch a video on hosting and check it off. And then, and then I watch another video and check it off, right? And I think I know it, I think I know it. But at some point, the illusion of that progress is going to blow up in my face, right? As I illustrate it, where either I feel overwhelmingly confused or I've assumed that I know things that I don't. Okay, I have a, a lot more things to point out about this, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, let's see, we'll see how far we'll go in this video, though. Let's go to this next slide. And so what does a breakthrough look like? Now, let me also uh, tell you that in addition to a, a subset or another type of a breakthrough is like a threshold where you're getting like over a particular barrier, over a particular hump. For example, if a customer makes a sale, or even if a customer reads a communicate, excuse me, a potential customer reads a communication of yours, like an email or something on your website, and they feel like, oh, I really, um, I like this guy. This guy is like me, all right, or I appreciate this this person. Um, that's a type of of a breakthrough. Now, after a breakthrough, you still need to lock in that gain, typically, which I call consolidating or integrating. But um, there's a certain type of resistance is gone once you have a breakthrough or once you get over a particular hump or get over a, you know, j jump over a particular wall or whatever. Until you jump over a particular wall or get past a barrier in some way, you either break through the barrier or jump over it or one way or the other, you get over something that would be resistance or just a full block, right? Um, Once you do that, then the resistance is gone. Now, if, if something's a full block, then people tend to realize they need to break through it. The, one of the problems, though, is that often things that we need to break through, they don't look like they're, they're full blocks, that, they, that they're fully stopping us. So, for example, if a, rom a romantic partner tells us that they love us, but if neither we nor they really understand what that means, then that's gonna cause a type of blurriness that's gonna stack in our relationship. And if we, if we start to base other actions or other commitments that we make with that person based on the fact that they love us, or in business based on the fact that they seem to really like us or wanna work with us. Let's say a guy turns to us and say, I really wanna work with you, right? That's kind of a little bit similar to a, uh, in a you know, parallel wise to a declaration of love in a romantic relationship. But if that's kind of a, ultimately a bit of a blurry concept, then, and then we base other commitments and stuff on top of that, that, and then let's say, hey, let's get married, and marriage itself isn't, isn't really clear. Like it, it clearly is like something that we have a vow and we have a particular day, right? So it looks, like, it looks like a clear event, but in terms of what it really is, which you're still married right at the day after your wedding, um, hopefully, uh, but, um, it, so it isn't just a ceremony, right? It, it is not just a milestone. It's something ongoing, and so it's a blurry concept. And so if the idea of love is blurry, you know, and people say, oh, what's true love? Or do I really love this person? Or I thought I loved them, and then I, now I don't. And so if love is blurry, and then if marriage is blurry, then, um, and if we don't really understand ourselves very well, or we don't understand the other person all that great, then now we have these four blurry concepts that are all being stacked on top of each other. And that's a real problem. Once you have a breakthrough, then uh, this blurriness is, is essentially gone. The resistance is essentially gone. Resistance might look like if, you, um, if you're dealing with a person in a relationship then, um, and they're, they're not particularly committed to you. Like if you try to get them to do something and they, they resist that. Or with a... Um, potential customer that's on like an email list or that might be visiting a website of yours, then there's a certain type of resistance they might have to believing what you have to say or to thinking that you're on your side. And if you break through that, then that resistance is mainly gone. It doesn't mean they'll buy. You might need to um, give them an offer that they want. But the resistance to your offer uh, might may not be there if you've broken through properly. Or when it comes to eating a particular type of healthy diet that you'd like to stick to, then when you have a particular type of breakthrough with that, then the resistance to eating that way would no longer be there. 
right? That breakthrough might be developing a habit over 30 days, or it might be having a certain uh, understanding and, and mental picture of what happens if you eat certain foods to your body uh, and so forth. But the way the breakthrough will look like is if you don't have the resistance anymore. So the way you want to go through your life is to set goals where there's no longer either resistance and or blurriness, depending on the nature of the situation. One or, one or both of those might be the, the relevant situation there, right? So sometimes you have resistance, sometimes you have blurriness. People live their lives where they have all this resistance. I, in other places, I've talked about vectors and imagining different forces in your life pushing you in various directions. And if you have a headwind or a vector pointing in a, in a difficult direction, such as if you're trying to work on your business, but if you have a belief about yourself, like maybe you're going to fail, or if you have other people in your life nearby to you and they're treating what you're doing like it's unimportant or that you can't succeed, then that's a certain type of resistance, right? Um, So it's easy if you were to picture trying to, if you're, a little, you're like leading an army trying to break into a fortress, that's kind of easy to picture where you need a breakthrough because pretty much it's either a full wall or an army against you or you've broken through and you've taken the army inside the fortress out and you're victorious and you're in there drinking your beers and, you know, and, and you know, around your campfire. Um, so that's easy. But the place in life where, where people don't have these breakthroughs in particular has to do with when... Um, when you don't have this clear wall in front of you, when you can kind of limp along or, or even push along at a reasonable speed, but there's resistance in the opposite direction, you can actually break through situations where you no longer have the resistance at all, and it's so worth it. And it took me a while to figure this out and what people were doing differently and what I would do differently sometimes, but I've, be, I've tended to be very good at strategy throughout my life. Uh, you may know or may not know that I was number one in the strategy card game Magic the Gathering by one of the um, by one reasonable measure um, about 15 years ago, and then I, I moved along and, and stopped playing it so seriously. Uh, or actually, I stopped playing it altogether. Um, but um, but this is what I was doing. What I was doing very well in strategy in whatever area of my life, then I would be looking for these breakthroughs. When you know to look for a breakthrough rather than a result, so a result might be I'm making ten, I want to make ten thousand dollars a month, or um, even that you rank a website number one. That's a result, or um, that someone you know marries you or says they they love you or seems to be really into you or has sex with you, or gets in you know agrees to a contract with you, right? Or you know agrees to some kind of business agreement, or that. Um, it might even look like they buy your product, but if you have a refund, if you can give refunds, then you haven't really broken through with that sale until after the refund policy is over, right? Whenever resistance to that particular thing is gone, that's when you've broken through. Or when it comes to understanding a concept like love or how to rank a website, then, um, then that's when you've broken through with, uh, when it comes to conceptually understanding something. Uh, one very interesting thing is that the idea of thinking itself or deci and decision making and understanding and who we are and how our brain works, that sort of thing, all of that or what our purpose is, uh, how the nature of goals work, all of that is tends to be blurry for people and that stuff is the kind of thing that you're naturally stacking the rest of your life on. Right? Like the way that, however, thinking works, you're using that all the time, right? And goal setting and motivation and your brain, you're using that all the time. And so, whatever else you're doing in life, you're, it's stacked upon that. But it seems to people as if that's unimportant to deal with. So, there's that constant, it, it, it comes, it, it's similar to resistance, but the, this blurriness, remember where you're kind of multiplying like threes or whatever, when there's different possibilities, um, or, or it can be a possibility of things going wrong. Like if you come to the wrong conclusion in life when you're making decisions or figuring out how to feel, what to feel motivated to do or what to take action on, 
or what actions to take. Let's say you're right 80% of the time. I pulled up a calculator here, and you know, if we multiply 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, now if we make two decisions using a method that's, if our thinking is right 80% of the time, now if we make two decisions, we only have a 64% chance of them both being right, and then times 0.8, Right now, we only have about a 50-50 chance of all three being right, and if a wrong decision, sometimes is going to really set us back, or if we're not, or sometimes it'll really just kill an entire venture or relationship, or even ourselves, right, and so our whole life. And so, uh, eventually, we're going to run into something like that if we don't get our thinking more accurate. And so one of the most powerful illustrations and why I know that this video series is going to be so helpful for you is that I know people don't use this breakthrough method properly or else they would stop in life and try to figure out how they, how they think, how they should think, how they can distinguish not things that they know from things that they don't know um, and uh, how their brain works exactly, who they are, what their purpose is. All of that stuff, you're stacking the rest of your life and on top of that. And if it's blurry, it causes you all sorts of problems. And the problem is that at the root of our thinking, we have all this blurriness stacked upon blurriness, right? Who are we? What's our purpose? How do we think? And, and all that stuff. Um, it's when we start to try to think, sometimes people will start to try to think about stuff, but they'll run into all this stacked blurriness and it's kind of hopeless, right? There's just too, much, too many layers of things that they haven't worked out yet. And then they just kind of give up. And I've unraveled all of that. And it's wonderful. And that's the law of implication uh, is, it relates to that if you want to get the results that you, uh, that you want in life, then start building on what you know and keep going from there. Keep stacking things that you know on top of that. It might sound obvious, but in practice, people are absolutely not doing that. By default, people use a method of approximation. And the brain figures that it has to because there's so much blurriness stacked upon blurriness that at some point you just have to approximate. There's just too many possibilities otherwise. However, if you spend the necessary resources on having a breakthrough, then you ha if you consolidate it properly afterwards, you'll have that forever. And you could start multiplying ones and start in a good way instead of multiplying threes or fours or fives or whatever. And so the possibilities don't stack up in a way that, that overwhelms and confuses you. And this is not just theory. This is something I've applied to my life, and it's incredible. And it's also fundamentally how I did my, the part that I did in building OMG machines. And whenever I talk about me building OMG machines, I'm not talking about what percentage of the, the credit that I deserve or how much of the work that I did, just that, of course, I did the part that I did. And... Um, and I contributed a certain type of design and final decision making and guidance and vision to the business. And, and this is one way of explaining how we've gotten the incredible results that we have. I still want even better. Sorry, I had a little cough there. I still want even better results. And so I'm always working to improve. But the results are certainly extraordinary uh, compared at least to um, to uh, what other stuff might be out there or what might be typical and such. Now, there's another sentence on this slide um, where I wrote, erosion, lack of integration, or danger may still exist after you have a breakthrough, um, such as, it, let's say you go through the OMG Machines coaching and you have a breakthrough which, where you kind of see how it all fits together, all right? Now, or maybe you see how one aspect of the training fits together, like, like how to like how you kind of have a make fundamental sense out of what a, a private blog network is, or how free traffic in general works, or maybe you first have a breakthrough about how a private blog about how linking works or trust flow and how that works, and then you understand private blog networks and then per, then it particularly all fits together into kind of a central mental picture or scenario or an idea. Uh, then that is a breakthrough. But that isn't enough. Once you've had that breakthrough, it can feel like a nice feeling or a light bulb. A light bulb going off, that kind of feeling is not necessarily 
a breakthrough at all. It might just be making a particular connection. It might even be just putting something in a box, a conceptual box, or making an association to something that seems to be similar. So don't necessarily confuse a feeling of having a breakthrough with an actual breakthrough. If there's no blurriness, you should know it because you can check it over and everything should make sense in light of, in light of this new breakthrough. So you don't need to rely on just a feeling. However, what I'm saying here in this sentence is that even if you have that central framework or where it all fits together, you are not done. Because the other thing that people do to violate this whole model that I'm giving you the correct way of, of going through life and the correct meta strategy for life of this breakthrough and consolidating is that if they do have a breakthrough, they tend to not consolidate. They tend to look for the next thing to go after, the next result to check off or whatever it might be. And so just because you, it all makes sense now, it doesn't mean you've remembered the details. So previously to having the breakthrough, what the details did for you, like watching particular um, videos or looking at how everything was structured and organized and looking at the different titles of the pages and, and little headlines of what, what the videos were about, all of those details, first, um, the first mistake people make is to not go for the breakthrough in the first place, but instead to try to assimilate and learn the details as they go. But you don't want to do that because without a proper breakthrough when you're learning, where you have a, a core picture that fits things together, or a core kind of scenario or, or understanding that, that makes sense out of the details, sort of like the trunk of a tree, until you have that, um, and it doesn't have to be for the entire coaching. Again, it could be for just one of the topics that you have that kind of central idea. Um, then until you have that central trunk, like a trunk of a tree, you, you're, you're, you want to look at the details. Details are still important and useful, but they're important and useful in order to have the breakthrough. All right? They're not important and useful in the sense that you're trying to yet apply them yet or memorize them yet or even understand them in a certain way yet. Um, one of the things that understanding means is attaching like a, a branch or leaves to the trunk. And you can't do that until you've gotten to the trunk, right? And so it would be like if, you're, uh, if you get um, like a dresser or a piece of furniture from Ikea and it comes in a box where you have to assemble it, you don't necessarily, you're not able to necessarily pick one of the pieces and then start assembling it to the next piece, right, that you pick out. Instead, you might take a look at the different pieces and take a look at the instructions and kind of get a sense of how, of where to start and build from there. And then at some point, it'll kind of make sense to you how the pieces fit together. Um, and uh, now, one of the ways that you might get to that breakthrough, like if like now I've switched over, but it's kind of a useful thing to picture is if you're putting a piece of furniture together that comes in a box where it's disassembled and it has a bunch of screws and a, you know, and, and the boards and, and so forth and the holes and the instruction book, then at first you're just looking for things that you know. So first you might sort of sort, okay, these are kind of like connecting rods and these are some of the main boards or pieces of the furniture, like the kind of the big pieces. And then these are the screws and you separate those out. And then you might take a look at the instructions. You're like, all right, this is the instructions and here's what it all looks like when it's done. And then what you'll do is you'll start to scan around and look around and see what the kind of first thing you can kind of connect together or start to build is. And then you might say, all right, I can see how, let me try start. And you might even start going and realize you need to restart in a different place. So you might take one of the major boards or pieces of, you know, of, the, of that furniture and then say, well, how do I connect things to this? And see how that starts to work. And that you might be able to build everything from there. And it might be that you have to backtrack and, and find that that wasn't the way that you need to start because you needed to start with a different one of the big pieces um, or else it's going to be too hard to put together later. But that's not bad. You just had to start somewhere and start poking around. And so at first you're using the details to try to have it all kind of fit together in your mind and see where to really get started from, a real proper foundation or kind of hub of the wheel or whatever, a trunk of the tree, that sort of thing. And that's all you're doing is trying to have that, that breakthrough. All right? When you realize this in life, see, what people do is they might sort of sense that they sort of want to have a breakthrough, but it's, that's um, mixed together with other sort of feelings and goals, like that they want to check things off and they want to make progress 
and they want a feeling of mastery of the details or to remember the details and stuff like that. And so, and they might have an expectation about how quick it should, should be or how much progress they should be making in a certain amount of time. And so it's all jumbled together, and so they can feel these feelings of frustration. The, the muscles in their back might tense up because when we're trying to like move forward and we feel like we can't move forward fast enough, then our back tends to tense up, and other muscles might tend to tense up. And, and so it can be a conf and so we're not really diverting our resources properly and calmly into just having a breakthrough. When you realize that the only thing that you're trying to do, and there's nothing else going on except for that you're trying to have a breakthrough, then it's very calming. And, and uh, I'll, I have another slide where I talk about things to avoid, right? Um, things that work against having a breakthrough, like having feeling like you're in a rush and so forth. Um, but once you know that you're just trying to have a breakthrough, then you can divert your focus and resources as much as it takes into having that breakthrough. Now, if you're building a piece of furniture, then that has a certain amount of importance in your life. And there, so there might be a maximum amount of resources that you're willing to divert to that, right? You might only have a few hours to try and do it. And at that, at that point, if you can't do it, then you might just need to do it some other way or just forget about that piece of furniture altogether. So when I say divert maximum resources, I mean proportional to the type of breakthrough that you're trying to have. Um, so, but as long as, that, as long as you understand that and you have a sense of, all right, what's the max amount of resources I'm willing to devote toward this, this um, area of life, then you, before you have the breakthrough, you put everything into having the breakthrough. And there's nothing else going on. There's just the, the breakthrough. And, and I'll, um, I'll switch over in a moment to a slide of, of kind of the process by which to have a breakthrough. And then, but then once you have that breakthrough, once you get to the trunk of the tree or the hub, or you have that sense of how it's all going to fit together with the, um, with the piece of furniture. And when I say how it's all going to fit together, that it, that's almost a wrong way of putting it. Of how of really the breakthrough is how to get started in a way where you see enough of how it's going to fit together that you know you're started properly and you can build from from your starting point well. Then you still need to build the rest of the of the. Uh, the desk, right? The piece of furniture. You're not done once you once it all makes sense and you see how it's all going to come together. You don't then walk away. But but in life, people do do that, or people. Someone will be studying for a test. You're probably past this point in your life, but it's a good illustration. And it'll all make sense finally. They'll see how, they, you know, they'll be doing some science test or something, uh, or studying for it, and they'll be like, oh, now I get it. I see how electromagnetics work. Or, um, yeah, how electromagnetics works or how this topic works. And they don't then, they think that they'll be able to remember all the details at that point, but they won't. They'll get to the test and even though it fundamentally makes sense, they might do very badly on the test because they're tested on the details and they'll say, darn it, I understood this so well, where did I go wrong? And so you need to build back up and actually do it. Same thing as people have a breakthrough about an idea like in their mind um, or about like like an idea about relationships or business or whatever, but if you don't then go and use it and integrate it by building the details, building if you have an idea about how to rank a website and you think oh I understand this, well that's not enough. Some people it depends on your personality, but some people intuitively really don't feel like consolidating matters, and the way their life will look is that things will be blowing up on them all the time. The the thought they made great progress, like they'll have these wonderful um, inspirations or feelings of progress in their life, and then things will fall apart on them. Businesses will fall apart, relationships will fall apart. Um, and so if you think you can rank a website, then go do it, right? Because by doing it, you are, you're assimilating the details properly, you're, you're doing the stuff. Or once all the videos fit together, you might need to rewatch them. And when you're rewatching them, that's a great time to start taking out your own, uh, either a uh, a word processing file on your computer, or on, I like to use a physical notebook. It's a little bit easier uh, for me. I, I like the whole process of writing physically, and it tends to work well with how our brain works and so forth. So you might take out just a physical pen and paper notebook. We do enough stuff on the computer. You know, It tends to be good sometimes to have something off of it. But if your preference is strongly for organizing things on a computer, that's fine. Um, but so you see how things fit together for a particular topic or for all of our training in OMG machines. 
then you go back through and you can watch the videos. But when you're doing that, it's better not to just watch them, but to then be organizing the details for yourself in your own little kind of, now you can make some checklists or organizational structure or a flow chart, right, or an outline of what to do for various parts of search engine optimization or for a client getting or for any number of things that we train on in OMG machines. You see how that works now? So first you calmly divert all of your, re your focus and resources that you have for that ta particular task um, into having a breakthrough and you're not trying to do anything but have the breakthrough at that point. Uh, and you'll follow the steps I'll do on the next slide. And then once you have the breakthrough, then you need to integrate and consolidate. If it's a, if it's a breakthrough in your mind, like you understand a new concept, then you want to walk through different scenarios in your mind of applying that concept, all right? Such as this concept itself. If, if this is you know, causing you to feel like you have a breakthrough in me describing all this, you're like, oh, wow, I see how now in life I want to um, have breakthroughs and consolidate. That makes perfect sense, David. But then if, if that satisfies you, then that's, that's a problem. Because what you need to do now is start to apply it to different areas of your life both in practice, but also in your mind. You can go very quickly in your mind through different scenarios and say, all right, how would I apply this to my relationships? How would I apply this to my thinking about myself and, and self-discovery and personal development? How will I apply this to my career and the business I'm trying to build and the learning that I'm trying to do for that? You see? I taught accelerated learning for 10 years, but ultimately, if you just understand this breakthrough and consolidation process and apply it to learning, then you will learn so effectively and efficiently and without knowing anything else about learning. Okay, I'll make this the final slide and I'll go through this fairly quickly and then I'll go through it pr pr probably in more detail in the next video. I don't wanna promise too strongly about what my next videos will be because I tend to think about it for a few days and maybe I'll have some further ideas on, on what the next thing, best next thing to cover is. But certainly one way or the other, I we'll wanna make sure that you uh, deeply understand how to go for breakthroughs. But remember, after you breakthrough, you're not done. You need to consolidate, integrate. All right, so, but just follow these, uh, basically these four guidelines here. You want to poke around, get an overview, but also zoom in on the details. You're not, this is important, you're not just trying to get the big picture. You're not just trying to get the view from 20,000 feet or whatever that, that, however people put that. It does help greatly and it's critical to zoom in on, on individual details like triangulating, like, you know, like, like, like get into various points that kind of define you know, like triangulating means that like, uh, uh, I guess three coordinates, three coordinates will define a, a point in space, right? So um, you, um, if you're doing this with the OMG machines training, then you uh, want to kind of watch in detail a few videos uh, about things that you think will be helpful to, to know. And you might want to go do that yourself, like I mentioned with registering, hosting a website and getting WordPress on there. And then maybe you want to at least try posting an article, even if it's your, like just one you write to yourself, and at least uh, at least try to see what it looks like to make a link to another site, even if it's to like some other site, not even your own, but just to get in a sense of how all that works. So there's often a kind of, I, um, not really a, a little bit of a debate or, or a confusion in people's minds about, do the details matter when I'm first learning something, or do I want to get an overview? Both, because what you're trying to do is have a breakthrough. All right, so both of these things. You can also picture if you're trying to, if you're leading a little army trying to break into a fortress that's defended by an opposing defending army, then you want to poke around the fortress. You want to get a sense of how, how the whole layout of the battlefield and the fortress is, but you'd also want to examine various walls and the sides and above and below and so forth in detail, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to send a scout out and have them tell you, yeah, okay, on the side of the fortress, it looks like a wall and it's a side, right? You'd want them to look in detail and see if there's any potential weaknesses and, and, and so forth. All right. Uh, now, when I say organize what you know, what you want to do is kind of, another thing I could say is organize or, or take inventory. I'm going to pause and type that in. Okay, I just typed in organize and or take inventory of what you know. And you can take and accumulate an inventory of what you know. So if scouts report back on different uh, details and aspects of the fortress, then it's good to sort of list those somewhere, right? And again, in a notebook or on a board, you know, whiteboard, or you could take inventory in your mind, or you can have kind of a mental picture of the fortress taking shape in your mind. And as details come in, they are kind of being attached to your scenario about how the fortress works. 
Um, and so depending on the situation, it might work to have a mental picture and that you're in a scenario that you're growing in your mind, or it might reach the point where it's much better to start writing it down in some way. It could be a flow chart. It could be a mind map, could be an outline, depending on your personality and what kind of works for you. When people discover that mind maps help and, and such, then it's just because when you understand how things really work, then you'll notice how people will discover little aspects of how things work here and there. And all, all by itself, just one little point that I make in a particular video of the law implication training can be a whole book that people write. You know, this whole idea of mind maps. They're useful because they help you have a breakthrough. All right, but really what you want to do is understand that you're trying to go for a breakthrough and do the entire process. Uh, if you just do one little piece of what I talk about here, then you might be way ahead of, of other people all by itself, and you can become a whole guru teaching one thing about the breakthrough process, and you can still help people, but far better to understand the whole thing. All right, the next thing that you're going to want to tend to do is, is there some vehicle that you're using to jump over the obstacle or break through the obstacle or um, whatever? This vehicle... Um, it might be like a sort of a somewhat physical object, uh, like a website is not a physical object, but it's sort of like a thing that you're building, right? So a website might be a vehicle for uh, to break through in some way in a business, or a particular um, writing on a web page might be what you're, the vehicle that you're using to break through um, with uh, a potential customer to have them feel like you're on their side or an interesting person to to. Um, to interact with and to learn from or to potentially buy a product from. Um, it might be a date or a series of dates that, that you go on or like a relationship in general. It might be the structure of a particular agreement that you're making with somebody. And it might be mental where it's, you know, I talk about if you're learning something and it sort of all fits together then um, then mentally you have this kind of core understanding or, or kind of like the trunk of a tree, as I said, or that if you're building that uh, piece of furniture, then mentally you have this idea of, of how it's going to fit together and, and where you're going to start um, building that uh, furniture. So that is a vehicle there. It's kind of a, a scenario that you're building. A business as a whole can be a, a, a vehicle for breaking through financially in your life where there's no longer really resistance to you you know, living, you know, having a comfortable income coming in. Uh, breakthrough stack, right? So they can be on a smaller scale or a larger scale. But, to, and, and this helps you to understand about taking action. Ta uh, here you're going to be taking some action. Here you're going to be taking some action. Uh, here you're taking some action. You know, all these things sometimes take action. Sometimes they're mental action. Sometimes you're physically typing something or doing something with your hands or you're talking. A conversation can, uh, could be a vehicle that, that you've built up to, or a series of conversations. But there's something that's in some way tangible, or at least a, like a clear mental picture. Even if something is an understanding in your mind, it still has a tangible nature to it, right? Where, you, where it's a clear memory or, or, or piece of knowledge that you have. So in that way, it's tangible, um, and you're building it. And when it reaches a certain point, it can break through where there's not going to be any more resistance for that situation, that topic in life. And then in terms of resource management, if you want to accomplish something faster, which means you want to break through and consolidate more uh, quickly, then instead of setting a deadline or rushing, when you're rushing, all you're really doing is pretending like you had a breakthrough when you didn't, you know, essentially you just kind of you know, inst instead of breaking through properly, you're just saying, oh, that's good enough, right? And so um, if you have an absolute deadline that's imposed on you by somebody else, then of course you can only do the best you can do in that time frame. And so even in that case, though, the maximum you can do is devote all of your resources to it, right? Like your conscious focus, your subconscious focus, um, your, your attention, uh, like your sensory attention, your... Um, uh, and of course, any kind of money or or actions or other resources or calling in favors from other people. So if you want, and, and then again, if there's a deadline, then you can't guarantee both a breakthrough and to hit a deadline. It, it's not logically possible to guarantee both. So 
I don't impose my own deadlines on things ever because instead I'm going for a breakthrough. I always, always, always am going through a breakthrough because I never want resistance. Breakthroughs are often pretty easy, uh, so it doesn't mean that it's that hard necessarily. Um, and I don't need to double breakthrough. Once you've broken through resistance or jumped over a wall, I didn't need to jump twice as high as the wall was. I didn't need to smash through the wall twice as hard as if I needed to smash through it, right? So I'm going through breakthroughs, but the interesting thing about going for breakthroughs, um, which could also mean jumping over something, you don't have to actually smash the thing. You can just kind of get over a certain hump or threshold. Or, um, But the interesting thing about it is when you're focused on breakthroughs, you actually can spend far fewer resources than people often do. Uh, often people just don't know to look for breakthroughs. They don't really know what's causing their results in life. And so they will use all kinds of overkill. Or when they're writing a sales letter, they will oversell the thing that they're selling way, way more than they needed to. And they, uh, which causes problems later down the road, right? They've, they've kind of spent too much. Uh, they've kind of deficit spent. They spent stuff that they don't have. And so they have a product that doesn't measure up to what they claimed because they thought they needed to make these claims in order to make the sale. So one of my secrets is that I actually spend a lot less effort than people do um, getting accomplishing certain results because I realize, hey, all I need to do is get over this wall. I don't need to jump three times higher than that. And all the time, people will be using overkill or too many resources, and I won't be. Uh, a v extremely simple, ex another example, just, just for the sake of illustrating what I mean, uh, pops to mind, like at, at OMG Live, which was a week ago, um, you know, a convention that, that we had um, in Nashville for OMG Machines. Um, I, I have nothing against doing so in the right situations, but I happen to not have bought drinks or meals for other people. I would just pay for my own uh, meal when I was eating out. And I was able to do that because I didn't need to buy people stuff more in order to break through with people. I, we did, I well, the business, not, not just me, Mike and Greg and, and, and the business as a whole, paid for catering, which was fairly, it was about $35 a person to have a particularly nice meal on Saturday. That, that's particularly nice for people, you know, to have that. And so that kind of does help to create a whole nice environment. Um, but I, um, you know, I, for, there's a whole number of things that were in the event to absolutely make sure that people would have a terrific experience and have a terrific result. I don't want them just to feel good but certainly I want them to take home training that's gonna cause them to succeed and make money. Um, but with all of those things, there's a sense of what needs to happen to have a full breakthrough, to fully get over the threshold with that. But then I'm not really looking to do a lot more than that because that can backfire. And that can, uh, for either I'm just burning resources that I could use somewhere else or, um, or, uh, or you can actually get diminishing returns. Uh, for example, if you're trying to have a breakthrough with not even diminish your returns, but it could actually be net go negative on you. Uh, I can talk about U-shaped curves and linear curves uh, in the next video. I have a slide for that. But you can easily see, like in a relationship, if you're trying to break through with someone and really take your relationship to the next level, where they don't have resistance to a new way of, of either working together or having a friendship relationship together. That, that's, you know, when, again, when, when you talk about taking a relationship to the next level, what does that mean? It means there's a whole, there's a set of new kind of proposals you can make with a person where they're not going to resist, right? If you take a, a romantic relationship to a certain level, then they're not going to resist being intimate with you, uh, you know, in, uh, as long as it's, you know, reasonable circumstances for that. Or if it's a business relationship, if you take it to the next level, they might not resist the next type of business proposal that you have for them. If you're looking to do that, though, then you don't need to pour unlimited resources into that, right? You don't, because if you think about it with, with in relationship situations, there's typically a place where it actually starts to backfire. If you're spending too much time talking to the person on the phone or overselling them, if they're a potential customer or a potential, uh, even a joint venture partner, you can oversell them on, you know, doing something, doing a venture with you. And it just kind of gets tedious and they think that either you talk too long and then they're not going to want to get on the phone with you next time unless they have a lot of time to talk. Or, um, or it's just a, an extra cost that they're going to incur in doing business with you or in a, being in a romantic relationship with you where you're just spending too much time with the person. So you not only hit diminishing returns with your time, but you actually take yourself backwards. So it's not always about more and more resources, but it's about hitting that kind of maximum point of the curve of resources where um, that you're diverting. And that's going to have the breakthrough happen most 
quickly and have the most chance of having the breakthrough in the first place and then having it happen most quickly. Okay, I will end this video here and we will continue in the next video.